Hello and welcome to Insight of Thelmology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another lecture in Refraction. In our last video, we studied about simple transposition and today we shall be studying about how do you actually go about the real toric transposition. Before we jump to the toric transposition, it is first very important to understand what is meant by a toric surface. We all know that a spherical lens is basically cut out from a sphere and has equal power in all the meridians. As you can see here, this plus 4 diopter uh, spherical convex lens will have plus 4 diopter spherical power in the horizontal and also in the vertical meridian. Similarly, if you have a concave lens, the concave lens will also have the same power along all its meridians. Whereas, if you take care of a cylindrical lens, a cylindrical lens is formed in such a way that the power is only present in one of the meridian and the other meridian does not have any power and that meridian is called the axis of that cylindrical lens. However, if you take that cylindrical lens now which was shown here in the previous picture whose axis was xy and if you take that cylindrical lens pick up from its end and then bend it so that the axis now becomes slightly curved in an arc of a circle and you keep on curving it till you form this uh, donuts like structure that is what is called a toric surface right so in a toric surface you can see that it is just an extended form of cylindrical lens which has been bent and curved along its xy axis so now this a uh, previous cylindrical surface which was having only one curved meridian will now have two curved meridians so as you can see that this smaller one is called the small r that is one meridian and then you have one more curve or meridian which is the larger r right so this is what happens in a toric surface in toric surface basically you have two meridians one vertical and one horizontal and both of them have different curvatures both of them have different powers and these meridians are actually located at 90 degrees to each other okay so to summarize in spherical lenses you have equal power in all the meridians in cylindrical lenses you have power across only one meridian and in a toric lens you will have power across two meridians but these two powers will be unequal and these meridians will be at 90 degrees to each other so how do you actually represent a toric prescription? Now here, uh, to simplify things, a toric prescription is usually your spherocylindrical prescription. That means a toric lens is usually represented as a spherocylindrical prescription. That means usually it is thought of as a spherical lens and that spherical lens is superimposed on a cylindrical lens. So that is how a prescription is. Okay, so toric lenses may be defined numerically as a fraction. So you can see the numerator here is the spherical lens and the denominator is basically the cylindrical lens. So that is how we write a toric prescription. Now, if we have written that toric prescription, how do you actually represent the same toric prescription in the power or in the optic cross of that toric lens? For example, here we have the sphere that is four diopters. And what did I tell you about spheres in an optical cross? A spherical lens or a sphere always will have equal power along all the meridians. So here, this 4 diopter sphere is present along all the meridians, whether it is a vertical meridian or is it the horizontal meridian. The next component is the cylindrical component. The cylindrical component here is the minus 1 diopter cylinder. Uh, cylinder. This is located at 180 degrees. That means the power is located along the vertical meridian. So you can write it like this. So, what will be the net powers along each meridian, horizontal and vertical? So, the net power in this toric sphere will actually be 4 diopter sphere along the horizontal meridian and 3 diopter sphere across the vertical meridian. So, this is how you represent a toric surface on a simple optical cross or a power cross right so this is what we do at the level of dispatching the lenses to a patient that means when you want to convert a toric prescription to a simple power cross however is it that simple do you actually create lenses like this that give a plus 4 diopter sphere along the horizontal and plus c diopter uh, spherical uh, cylinder power along the vertical no this does not happen at the level of manufacturing right it is not as simple as that 
so at the manufacturing level what happens is that you actually take a parent sphere and at the back surface of that parent sphere now you need to carve out those two meridians okay and as you carve out those two meridians on the back surface of that parent uh, sphere that is represented here you are going to finally get a prescription that you originally desired okay now the question is what sphere you need to take initially so what is that parent lens that you're going to take initially and how much are you going to carve the axis at the back of that lens in order to get this prescription right so that is your study question here so the answer to that is toric transposition okay so toric transposition is a sort of transposition that you do at the level of manufacturing of the lenses right so simply if one wants to know the exact surface power of the front of the lens and the back surface of the lens so it basically means if you want to know exactly the spherical lens that you're going to take so what power is going to be on the front of that lens and what power are you going to etch or carve at the back surface of the lens and how much power are you going to ground on each of these surfaces so that it matches your desired prescription that is here okay that is what is called as toric transposition okay so what i mean to say is you have a spherical component on the front surface of a toric lens okay that will have equal powers like this and at the back surface of that spherical lens you're going to actually carve out two meridians in such a way that they have unequal powers okay so you're going to carve out one meridian as x and one meridian as y and x is obviously not equal to y now this principal meridian that you are uh, carving out the principal meridian of that toroidal surface which has a weaker power okay which is less curved is called the base curve of that toric surface okay and the principal meridian of the toroidal surface that you are carving out which has the higher power or the greater curvature is referred to as the cross curve of the toroidal surface and always remember that the base curve and the cross curve of the toroidal surface are perpendicular to each other so if the base curve is present at 90 degrees the cross curve is present at 180 degrees okay so that is very very important now whenever someone asks you about toric uh, transposition it is always important to specify the base curve and usually in the toric transposition problems the base curve will always be given to you so again to summarize what is toric transposition a toric astigmatic lens is basically made up of one spherical and one toric surface okay and that spherical surface is usually the anterior surface which is represented in the numerator and the toric surface is present in the denominator okay the principal meridian of the weaker power of the toric surface or the lesser curved part or lesser curved surface is called the base curve of the lens and the meridian which does uh, which has uh, other than the base curve which is present on the toric surface is called the cross curve of the lens so how do you basically write that toric formula okay for toric transposition now you should remember that the optic cross formula and the other prescriptions are totally different whereas the toric formula is where you are specifically mentioning the uh, power of each surface the anterior surface and the posterior surface and you go one step ahead in even describing the curves which are present in the posterior surface so here the anterior surface is basically represented in the numerator and that tells you regarding the power of that spherical surface or the parent lens and the bottom line denominator will represent to you number one the base curve along with its axis of the base curve and then you put a slash or uh, a slanting line like that and followed by the cross curve along with its axis so this is how you're going to write your toric formulas now let us discuss about the steps of toric transposition okay so how do we go about doing toric transposition now let us take the simple prescription that you got of a patient so here you can see that this patient has plus four diopter spheres okay minus one diopter cylinder the axis is 180 degrees now you have to send this to the manufacturing lab and the base curve that you want is minus six diopters now let us try to formulate a toric formula that means let us try to do toric transposition on this prescription now rule number one that is step number one the step number one of toric transposition is 
that the sine of the base curve that is given to you, which is given here is minus 6 diopter. So sine is minus and the sign of the cylinder of the spherocylindrical prescription here is again it's minus it has to be similar so this is the step one the sign of the base curve and the sign of the cylinder of the spherocylindrical prescription it should be same it should be similar it should be either minus minus or it should be plus and plus what if they are not similar if they are not similar you have to carry out simple transposition okay if if, if they are not similar you will transpose the spherocylindrical prescription to an alternate spherocylindrical form so that the base curve and cylinder are of the same sign i already mentioned to you in detail what is simple transposition and how are we writing those alternate forms of one spherocylindrical form to another right in our example as you can see the base curve is also in minus and the spherocylindrical prescription is also in minus and therefore there's no need to do simple transposition. Now what if we had this as an example. Here suppose the base curve that is given to you is in plus and the spherocylindrical prescription here is in minus. Now you want to convert this into similar signs okay so what do you do here you have to carry out simple transposition and how do you do that simple transposition is you have to first add on the uh, cylinder and the sphere so that will be minus four diopter spherical that will be your sphere and the cylinder you have to just change the sign and the axis has to be rotated through 90 degrees so now your new prescription will be this and the base curve is of course same that is plus 2. Now the further steps of toric transposition you will carry out using this second prescription. So I hope that is clear. So that is the step 1 of the toric transposition in which you have to carry out simple transposition if the signs of the sphere sorry the signs of the cylinder and the base curve are not the same. Now going back to our original example that is this. So what is step 2? In step 2 we are going to actually find out the numerator of that toric formula. That means what is that parent lens that we are going to use for the grinding. Okay so what is the power of the anterior spherical surface right. So how do we actually carry out. Now basically we what we want in the final thing is this right. Now according to the nominal lens formula what do we know here so here we are basically trying to find out that parent sphere through which we are going to uh, carve out the posterior toric surfaces right so let us try to find out that now according to the nominal lens formula we know that the power of the anterior surface plus power of the posterior surface will finally give you the total power right here so we what we are trying to calculate we are trying to calculate the power of the anterior surface right and in the posterior surface what are we going to etch we are going to etch the base curve basically and finally what do we want as the final uh, spherical power we want plus 4 right so we know the base curve we know the final power we are looking out for this anterior surface power so anterior surface power will be your final power in the spherical cylindrical prescription minus the base curve so here the final power is plus four and you are going to subtract this base curve base curve is already minus so it will become plus four minus minus is plus so plus six that becomes plus 10 diopters right so the sphere that you're going to use here is plus 10 diopters right so basically what it means is that you're going to use a parent sphere of plus 10 diopter and through its posterior surface you are going to actually curve, uh, carve out this base curve so that finally the spherical power that the patient is going to get is plus 4. so in the story formula now this numerator is plus 10 diopter spherical for this given prescription right now in the further steps what are we going to calculate we are going to calculate the base curve at the axis and the cross curve and the axis let's come to the step 3 in the step 3 we will write the base curve as it is the base curve will always usually be given to you okay and the base curve axis will be perpendicular to the axis given in your uh, prescription so here the base curve was already given as minus 6 diopter cylinder and the axis in the prescription is 180 so the base curve axis will be perpendicular to that that is 90 degree 
So in the step 3, you are going to write the prescription of the base curve that is minus 6 diopter cylinder at 90 degrees. Now what are we left with? We are only left with the cross curve and its axis. So that brings us to the step 4. To find the cross curve, you have to add the required cylinder to the base curve power right so this prescription here what is showing is minus one diopter cylinder it basically means that if you take the optical cross the power cross the difference between the two meridian is minus one diopter cylinder now here from the step three we know that one meridian is already minus six so what should be the other meridian so that the difference is minus one diopter cylinder okay so the other meridian will obviously be minus 7 diopter cylinder or what you can do is cross curve is nothing but it is the required cylinder that is equal to the cylinder power given in the prescription plus the base curve. So required cylinder here is minus 1 and you add to that the base curve, base curve is minus 6 diopters so the total cross curve that you get is minus 7 diopters and if you actually carry out the difference between minus 7 and minus 6 the difference is minus 1 diopter cylinder right so I hope that is clear so the cross curve here will be minus 7 diopter cylinder at 180 degrees so this is how we have solved this equation uh, this prescription that is plus 4 diopter sphere minus 1 diopter cylinder at 180 degree with the base curve of minus 6 the toric formula will be written like this Okay, so I hope that is clear to you now. Sorry, this is plus. Now let us try toric transposition in this example. Here you can see that in step 1, the sign of the base curve and the sign of your cylinder are not the same. So we will carry out simple transposition as step 1. So doing simple transposition, what do we get? We get sphere as plus 1 and the cylinder will be minus 3 diopter cylinder at 180 degrees, right? So this will be our new trans, uh, new tra uh, prescription sorry, to play with. Step 2 is now you are going to carry out or uh, find out the anterior spherical surface. The anterior sur spherical surface is the desired spherical power minus the base curve so desired spherical power here is what it is plus one diopter and the base curve is minus of minus six diopter so you are going to get plus one plus six that is plus seven diopters here so in the toric formula what did we get here we, we got the numerator of the toric formula that is plus seven diopter spherical next we have to find the base curve the base curve is already given to us. It is minus 6 diopters and the axis of that base curve will be 90 degrees across this 180. That means it will be 90 degrees. So now in the denominator, let us write the base curve. The base curve is minus 6 diopter cylinder at 90 degrees axis. Now finally, what are we left with? We are left with the cross curve. We know that the cross curve is nothing but desired cylinder power that is minus 3 diopters plus the uh, plus the base curve so base curve is minus six diopters so if you add them both what did you get you'll get minus nine diopter and the axis will be the same as in the prescription so that will be 180 degrees so the cross curve is minus nine diopters at 180 degrees so finally what do we get for this prescription we got on the anterior surface the plus seven diopter sphere and on the posterior surface, you are going to carve minus 6 diopter cylinder at 90 degree. That is your base curve. And then a more steeper one that is a cross curve minus 9 diopter cylinder at 180 degree. So I hope that is clear with this example. Now, I know you can do this. So now let us try to transpose this prescription torically and answer it in the comment section. So that's all for today. Thank you and have a nice day.